So man, I don't know how that happened, but uh, apparently I pressed the wrong, I pressed the wrong um, button. Anyway, so audio book, The Sacred Seven, right now doing a pre-sale. If you want to um, PayPal me a donation, something, we'll make sure that you get the the audio book pre-sale in the last 50 pages of the audio book. So excited to share this with you, getting into the process, creating your own sacred seven. Creating your own sacred seven, chapter six. The sacred, need to start over here. Let me take this back right there. Chapter 6, Creating Your Own Sacred Seven. The seven sacred containers of self-identity call empowers us to embrace members of our family lineage, understand them more deeply, and delve deeply into the spiritual abundant archetype of our relationship to them. A few years ago, during one of my visits to the Havasupai Nation in the Grand Canyon, an elder started up a conversation with me. He turned his ancient eyes to me and said, I do not trust the spirits. Not all spirits or guides have your best interest in mind, and many will lead you astray. The people you should trust are your family and the way. Intuitively, I felt that he was speaking of the family that is always with us. In the moment in the bottom of the Grand Canyon, I realized a spiritual truth that would change my life. I realized how logical it was to recognize that our greatest spiritual guides can be within our own family. Yet for many of us, myself included, understanding the guidance of my sacred seven meant having the courage to do some deep spiritual and energetic self-work. Facing our relationships within our families can be complicated and painful. Still, if we have the courage, it allows us to find a portal to the, our deepest power and peace. As you proceed with the sacred seven, you will find within yourself two profound guides that will help you in the process of confronting, healing, and elevating these relationships. These two can help you shift in a moment what would take most people years of counseling and therapy to overcome. These two precious companions are compassion and empathy. They are your alchemy tools to help you transform what would otherwise seem impossible to transform. Compassion has given me the ability to overcome my feelings of remorse, guilt, shame, anger, and vengeance. It has helped me take what I consider negative and simply observe the energy that's associated with what I was experiencing. By opening myself to compassion, I have been able to utilize the energy of my feelings to heal my relationships with even those that have contributed trauma and abuse to my life. Empathy can be the catalyst that connects us with the vibration of the infinite. It helps us unsheath ourselves from our addiction to victimhood. Many people hardly ever experience empathy, and so their empathetic response is underdeveloped in their minds and hearts. As we call empathy forward in the practice of the Sacred Seven, we build the ability to displace the victim energy that captivates our consciousness and holds us prisoner to our own traumas. Like a true martial artist responding with fluid movement, the antagonist is transformed with gentle grace. The energy is harnessed, transmuted, and transformed to serve a greater purpose. We look deep into the energy to find the place in which no harm is done. We use empathy to embrace and harness the energy of the trauma within us, and by doing so, harness the truth of our potential. A martial artist is weakened if he judges the attack as negative, or even labels it as an attack, for that matter. Empathy gives you a level of freedom of judgment by helping you break the chains of your human conditioning and compels you to look at your experiences as either good or bad, negative or positive, dark or light. Empathy will allow you to step into the life of your ancestor the one who chose to be one of your sacred seven and choose to give you life. 
so you can be closer to who you are. Oops. Just trying to do my best here. Let's see what happened. So you can be closer to who you are. So you can be closer to who you truly are. For example, I believe that before my mother was born, she decided to take on an identity of being a drug addict. It was part of a spiritual agreement she made in the pre-existence, one she agreed to for my benefit. Why do I say that? Because there is a deep teaching inside of the container of my relationship to her. While I have countless memories of my mom's black and blue face from beatings from some boyfriend, the police, or another drug addict, how many times more did that happen that I didn't even know about? How many times was she abused or raped that I never knew about? Loving me as a parent, she kept those incidents hidden from me so that I wouldn't have to suffer further. With compassion and empathy, I have gained the ability to see who she really was. I have been able to see more within her, feel more about her, and by doing so, receive more medicine from her. Compassion and empathy have allowed me to do that, and by doing so, heal myself. The same is true with my father. With empathy and compassion, I have come to see that he struggled dearly in his life so that I could find my own medicine for myself. His life as a drug addict was full of suffering. Who knows how many times he was assaulted and how much trauma he went through in his life. Compassion has allowed me to hold him in a different light and gain a greater understanding of myself at the same time. Always remember that it is your process, no one else's. The way you view your relationships can easily be completely different from your brother's or your sister's perspective. The depth with which you design your sacred seven is about how deeply you are willing to go inside yourself to anchor into your reality a new design for all of your relationships in life. Now it is time for you to create your own introduction and begin your own unique Sacred Seven process. To begin the process, you will create an entry point for each one of the directions and containers of self. To do this, you will create a symbol to use as your point of energetic connection. That will act as a doorway into the world of spiritual connection and the design of who you are becoming. It will help you dive deeply into the energy and freedom that each container offers you. You will use your symbols in your meditations and even journaling to focus on, travel through, and hold space for transformation. Your symbols will also serve as building blocks for a crest and lineage you can pass on to the next seven generations within your family. We use very simple symbols, a few lines drawn, shapes, or even dots on a paper drawn with intention are enough. Symbols carry power. Here in my home in Arizona, the mountains are blanketed with thousands of symbols drawn by ancient hands. Many of them are very simple designs, but when you sit with them, your mind can travel to deep dimensions. Then you will focus your intention on calling in the energies of the directions, one at a time, building a metaphysical architecture with these energetic building blocks and constructing a new design for your life. By doing so, you can take responsibility for building that which is you. I provide you with some, some ideas for articulating your vision for what each of the containers hold, but ultimately what you want to fill your container of self with is up to you. You'll thoughtfully consider each container, read through journal entries, which I'll describe soon, and reflect on what has been revealed to you about each one of them. You can journal or even video what you feel is important to each of your containers, and you might want to share what power you see in yourself from that direction. It is literally all about you and your intentional design. As you journey through the seven sacred containers and the seven sacred directions, you begin to create a holder of a perfect perspective of who you are. I invite you now to open the space for each container and let them come through, you to share their wisdom. We begin with the first three, 
of the sacred containers, the spiritual ones, divine feminine, divine masculine, and the sacred child. These first three resonate with the spiritual because they are deep, mysterious in nature. They are the great I am, the mystery source of all life, and that which made the design that is in you. They are also the foundation from which you will view the other four directions. Their wisdom will allow you to be guided through the entire seven vantage points of the sacred containers of self-identity. The Divine Feminine Container As you journey into the place of the Divine Feminine, the below space, you find that you are the very same force that created all life. Within the Divine Feminine, you have come into agreement with all that is nurturing in the universe. It is a place of power, and it is the beginning of the journey to manifest your medicine. The truth of your suffering will become clear to you because as you have experienced love and joy, you have also awakened to the tragedy of the human experience and the illusion and confusion of this reality. Now you can begin to dissolve that illusion and experience the sovereignty of understanding that you are the mother of your own destiny. The Divine Feminine is represented in your relationship to the one who gave birth to you, your mother. The universe was once a void, darkness without consciousness. Then it put a circle around itself and said, I am. From there it produced all forms of sacred geometry until its replication process and it created you. Why? Simply and complexly because it wanted to love and to be loved. The reason that we can find beauty in the darkness is because we were birthed from the darkness of the womb. So it is time to forgive yourself for the conflicting thoughts of what your mother did or did not do for you. It is time to stop thinking about the feminine human being who gave birth to you. It is time to begin feeling that the love of the universe is manifested through the Divine Mother who gave life to you and give yourself permission to feel the Divine Feminine within yourself. By creating the Divine Feminine Presence within yourself, you enhance your relationship with your actual Mother. You give yourself the perspective tool of learning from her point of view. During this process, the herd of neglect may try to interfere and captivate you. You may find yourself deep in internal battle of recognizing her for who she really is or was. You may need to balance that pain with the compassion and the deep empathy of looking at yourself from her eyes. That is from the sacred below to give you that wisdom. See yourself as her, overwhelmed and unable to give. Feel the pain that was the cause of her being the person she is, and you will begin to free yourself from the confines of the victimhood and be capital. Made a little mistake there. And be capital. <sighs> Phew. It's hot under this light. I'm going to turn this light off. That's better. Not so hot. This room's scorching. Ooh, all right. Where was I at? and be catapulted to the brightness and beauty of self-mastery. Oops, I don't think I, let me see. Elf. Elf. From the confines of the victimhood, and be catapulted to the brightness and beauty of self-mastery. Oops.
If you have or had a challenging relationship with your mother, it manifested in the obstacles in your soul's path, only to help you find the nurturing side of yourself. If you had a critical mom, you can see from the perspective of the Divine Feminine all the qualities that gave your mom that critical distinction in your mind. The vantage point allows you to reframe your Divine Feminine aspect into one you turn to when you need gentle encouragement, a nurturing mother or a mother full of wisdom. The sweat lodge ceremony mimics the experience of going into the below place. It is a place of purification and represents being inside the mother's womb. I often think about my mother when I am in the sweat lodge. I think about the suffering that she experienced in her life, the roads that she chose to take, all of which would seem so meaningless if I did not find my medicine. Now I am so grateful to be able to see myself from the perspective of the Divine Feminine. As a man, the mysteries of the Feminine are close yet distant. They are close in that we too are Feminine in design, but they are distant in our ability to understand the vastness of the womb, the cycles, and the mysteries of the Feminine. Only through understanding the perspective of this sacred direction can we begin to truly understand the sacrifice and courage of our mothers. For those who have had the pain of addiction, abuse, absent parents, rape or incest, know that you too can design a representation of mother to serve you. By doing so, you can break the cords of your inner victim and find your medicine in the relationship. Learn from her. She was brought to you as a teacher. And as you let spirit guide you through your process, the steps you need to take to manifest a feminine guide for yourself will become clear. Within all of the challenges that your soul has manifested in the design of your mother, there is an ultimate perfection that is beyond our human understanding. And it takes a lifetime of understanding to manifest the rich layers of self-revelation that this process will bring inside the container of the Divine Feminine. Not having a connection to your Divine Feminine can create an imbalance in the protective or masculine side of yourself. You might be reactively protective so much that you don't do the things that you want to do. Maybe you stop yourself from experiencing life. This is the masculine living outside of the balance that is available inside the Trinity of the seven sacred containers. Lack of the divine feminine connection can also bring reflected in a tendency to not take care of yourself, coming back into alignment with the nurturing aspect of yourself, reconnects you with the soft voice of the inner divine feminine so that you are free to engage in life's adventures. Create your symbol. On a blank piece of paper, draw a symbol to represent a portal through which the divine feminine aspect of yourself can express itself. This symbol will act as a window into the dimension of the divine feminine and a doorway into viewing yourself with the nurturing qualities that your soul wants for you. It will be a portal to find your medicine and purpose in ceremony, which I'll describe a little later. Use the direction of the below place to guide you. Put your hands upon the earth, feel into the ground, and use your breath to become one with the direction. Call upon your mother to help you find your symbol. Call Hello. Call upon your mother to help you find your symbol. It's hot in this room. I'm like sweating over here doing this book reading. <laughs> uh. Call upon your mother to help you find your symbol. Call upon your mother to help you find your symbol. There we go. Call upon your mother to help you find your symbol. Ask her to guide you in the process and help you understand 
what to draw, how to move your hand to help you find the portal to connect to yourself. If you did not know your mother, or if you do not know her name, you'll need to create a name to use in your introduction. To do so, find a safe place to sit quietly and meditate on the qualities of your divine feminine aspect. Bring an image to mind that you'll use as an energetic portal for your design. Bring an image to mind that you'll use as an energetic portal. For your designated mother, you might see a unicorn, a dolphin, a color, or something completely different. Don't let judgment stop you. Write the name of the image somewhere on your piece of paper. This will be the name you will use when you learn to introduce yourself. Questions to meditate on. Spend some time in meditation on the divine feminine aspect of your sacred seven. Use these questions as a launching point of inquiry and then journal your answers. What do I feel from the below space? What feelings come up for me? What has my mom taught me about the divine feminine that serves my process? What can I do to embrace the divine feminine? How can I nurture myself or others? What does the divine feminine within me look like? What actions can I take today to demonstrate self-nurturing love? What is a practice I can incorporate into my life to remind myself of being more nurturing? The Divine Masculine Container the Divine Masculine is found in the above place, the place of Father Sky, the infinite sower of the seeds of life. Through this container, we look at ourselves and we see the infinite possibility of solutions to the challenges of life. Your Divine Masculine aspect is the protector, the decision maker, and the holder of the logical mind. It is in everyone of us, regardless of physical gender. From the vastness of the above place, you awaken it within you and become champion of the battlefields of self-protection. You are the embodiment of masculinity formed by the fires of life. The divine masculine was the light that first broke through the womb, the power of the action of creation, protection, and embodiment, strength in the logical mind. As you part This part of you is the observer of your triggers and the voice that predicts the outcomes of your feelings. It is the one that stops the impulses and the one that takes action as you come into alignment with the divine masculine representation within the seven sacred containers. You let go of the voice of judgment and discover the voice of reason. You let go of the teachings of those outside of yourself and find meaning and purpose within yourself. When you access your divine masculine, you help to restore the fullness of your incarnation in the human experience. You turn away from the perspective of the victim and leave abandonment behind you. Create your symbol. On a blank piece of paper, draw a symbol to represent a portal through which the divine masculine aspect of yourself can express itself. This symbol will act as a window into the dimensional energies of the divine masculine and be a doorway into viewing yourself with the logical qualities that your soul wants for you. It will be a portal to find your medicine and purpose in ceremony. Use the direction of the above place to guide you in this practice. Reaching to the sky, looking above, 
breathing in the expanse of the above place. Feel into the stars and the sun and call upon your connection to your Father to help you in the process of finding your symbol. Meditative Practice Sit and meditate on your relationship to the Divine Masculine and to your Father. Ask what you have learned and how you might apply these teachings to serve yourself and others. Ask yourself what you can do to father yourself and how you can practice it today. Ask yourself if you are feeling protected. Ask what about your life would help you feel safer. As if it's logical that you feel unsafe. Logical that you feel unsafe. As if is logical that you feel unsafe. Ask if it is logical that you feel unsafe. If you know it isn't logical, then ask yourself if it's okay to practice the steps of whatever it is you need to do to feel safe. You are your protector. You are your own divine masculine. And now you must find that energy. Journal your answers. If you did not know your father, or if you didn't have someone you consider a father figure, you'll need to create a name to use in your introduction. To do so, find a safe place to sit quietly and meditate on the qualities of your divine masculine self aspect. Bring an image to mind that you will use as the energetic portal for your desire. As the energetic portal for your desire. that you will use as the energetic portal for your designated father. You might see a celestial being, an angel or some sort, or a dolphin, a color, or something completely different. Don't let judgment stop you. Write the name of the image somewhere on a piece of paper. This will be the name you will use when you learn to introduce yourself. The divine child container. The child is represented in the inside place, the place within your heart that is completely intimate and vulnerable. It is the innocence. This part of you has the ability to survive, grow and thrive. Within the seven sacred containers, the sacred child holds the playful spirit and simply believes in the divine. So close to the source within the Trinity, you are the foundation of the feminine and masculine, because without your child self, creation has no container to manifest. Together in their fullness, the divine feminine and divine masculine unify to create a perfect present. A perfect presentation of the power of the universe. You are the embodiment of the creative forces of life. The inside place holds the space for that which is pure. It is the divine power of the child in submission to the will of the universe. You are laughter that brings changes and the voice that cries. You are the tantrums that are safe to be and you are the joy that is safe to be without reason. You are infinite possibility and a blank page in which your masterful hand will create the story of a thousand lifetimes. Create your symbol. 
On a blank piece of paper, draw a symbol to represent a portal through which the divine child aspect of yourself can express itself. This symbol will act as a window into the dimensional energies of the divine child and as a doorway into viewing yourself with the playful qualities that your soul wants for you. It will be a portal to find your medicine and purpose in ceremony. Use the direction of the above place to guide you in this practice, holding your hands on your heart and embracing Holding your hands on your heart and embracing to guide you in this practice. Holding your use the direction of the above place to guide you in this practice. Holding your Use the direction of the inside place to guide you in this practice, holding your hands on your heart and embracing the child within you, breathing into the expanse of the inside place. Fill your cells, your organs, and your bones. Go deep into the feeling of your own body. Feel at home here. Call upon your connection to your child that felt able to play and be free and imagine a better, more abundant life. Call upon your inner child to help you in the process of finding your symbol. If you didn't know the meaning of your name, you can research it. It might be extremely revelatory for you to understand the definition of your name and how it applies to your life. My name is Andrew, which means strong man, and my last name Ecker, a German name, and it means the corner. I have learned that the walls of the corner are my heritage. One wall is Native American, while the other wall is European American. This gives me a comfortable place in the middle. If after you've researched your name, you don't want to use this name in your introduction, you may rename yourself. To do so, you must sit in a quiet place and search for the parts of you that serve your greatest good. Search until you find the perfect name. This won't be hard, but it may take time. You are a complex human being, and in the complexity, you must find some meaning and direction, which is what this practice is all about. So be patient. Questions to meditate on. Here are a few questions to meditate on and inquire into about your divine child. Journal about the answers you get. Is my inner child feeling both nurtured and protected? Can I play, dance, sing? Can I drum, pray, and feel comfortable? What can I do to practice play today? What can I do to help my inner child believe again? Can I give myself and others the benefit of the doubt? Is there something I haven't done simply because I haven't felt safe enough or loved enough? Is there a place that I can take my inner child to play and be free? The Mother's Mother Container as I've mentioned, the first three containers embody the spiritual directions and are the foundation for the remaining containers of the sacred seven. Once we've engaged the spiritual directions, we find ourselves in the East again, where we experience ourselves anew. This is the first container that we work on to intentionally design ourselves for our relationships, other than our relationship to ourselves. Your mother's mother guides you to fulfill the direction of the East. She is the embodiment of who you are to new people. This container is where you begin to form the formless energy of thought into the intentional energies that will be seen and felt outside of yourself. By declaring your sacred seven intention to the world and speaking the name of your maternal grandmother, you give life to this purpose. All the energies of the East will hold this space for you from within your intentional design. In my lineage, it would be said that your mother's mother is the one who you are born from. 
Your mother's mother was the womb in which the womb that gave birth to you was born from. She is the closest clan member within the ancient design, and her symbol will be the name of your first clan. As we sculpt our lives out of the brokenness, shame, and defeat we have experienced, we rise up to the clarity of new beginning in the East, trusting in the power of our will and with the help of the connection to source, we design our reality to hold to the principle that people we meet are falling deeply in love with us the minute they see us. With the grace and skill of a master craftsman, we are called to challenge the energetic architecture of reality to include the choice of our consciousness to show the truth of what it means to be a new opportunity. The shyness that once gripped us in the imbalance of the divine masculine and divine feminine are now gone, and we are free to play in the newness of friendship that fosters a lifetime of meaning. Every thought that you bring to the place of the East fortifies the beauty of your incarnation. You are a new creation and whole and perfect in every way. The people who are new to you see you as having something for them to learn from. You have a natural magnetic quality that brings into your field people who are the greatest help to build your optimal life. Your maternal grandmother is the energetic identity that represents you to the new people in your life. Now perhaps you have felt shy, insecure, or less than others, or perhaps you have struggled to say something to a new person you find attractive. Choosing to create this portal inside your life will help to bring balance and reduce your tendencies to miss chance encounters. In turn, it will stop the wheels of self-doubt from turning. When we miss an opportunity to share with someone out of fear or self-judgment, it is usually because we have not set up the foundation of the Trinity, fortifying your self-view, not from your own flawed perspective, but from the perspective of the newness of life expressed through the East is profound. This access point gives you the ability to say to yourself that you are considering the possibility that people love seeing you as an opportunity. By doing so, you begin the process of not hearing the damaged voice that continues to turn the wheel of self-doubt, grinding at the grief of missed opportunity. But instead, you begin the process of feeling the love of new relationships when you are around and you are enjoyable to be with. People are attracted to the gentleness of the East. This practice might be a challenge for those that have spent years masking themselves in self-doubt, that it in turn may have led to self-medicating with drugs, alcohol, money, shopping, new friends, or even having sex with people as a way of masking their need for intimacy. If you have wandered for years looking for relationships that are meaningful, but only connected with shallow people, it is most likely because you are not practicing the intimate conversation yourself. It becomes very important to listen carefully from the perspective of what you are to others. Think about your own programming. Are you seeing new friends or new enemies? Are you projecting that people are mean, cruel, angry, or dangerous? If so, does it still serve you? I have been abused many times, yet I have learned that seeing new people as abusers only leads me to more abuse. The soul becomes attracted to the frequencies that it produces. The East Grandmother has held a space of reckoning of these energies within myself. She has allowed me to see myself through her gentle eyes of newness. As she rests in the East and governs the gentle new friends, that family, that emerge in my life. You will work with this Eastern grandmother to fortify this space. The storms of life will come, but the skills of navigating them will be available for the rest of your human journey. Finding the compass will be as simple as just listening to her voice. Remember, this is a practice. Be gentle with yourself and continue to love the newness of your newfound perspective. When you see a person you don't know, you might have feelings that come up such as racism, fear, hatred, or disconnect. You know these feelings and thoughts 
are no good for you, yet you do not know what to do. I am excited to tell you that by becoming a whole person again, many of these struggles will fade away. So practice the design. Sit with this idea of matriarchal grandmother representing a metaphysical architecture. She is the holder of wisdom for your life. Maybe you have never met her, or maybe she has been cruel or unable to be supportive. These judgments and feelings are ultimately teachings that will become truth of your medicine for your human brothers and sisters. The tools that you learn from her will be revealed in time. But first you must design in your mind a process that is going to serve you. Create your symbol. On a blank piece of paper, draw a symbol to represent the portal through which the energies of the East will come through. This is the symbol of the new person that people will meet in your life and aspects of that person you want to design yourself to be will gather in this symbol. You will Hello everyone. We'll gather in this symbol. You will You can create any type of symbol, drawing, or shape that you'll use to allow the energetic spirit body to ground into becoming your reality, giving her a place to call home. As you energetically define your symbol, you create a depth that allows her energy to flow through it. She is eternal within the space that is beyond time, and her medicine needs to be shared with your human family. This symbol will act as a window into the dimensional energies of the East, the place in which your mother's mother holds space for you. It will be a doorway into viewing yourself with the energetic qualities of newness, and it will be a gateway into the metaphysical architecture of how you are going to be in perfect relationship with beings who newly interact with you. You don't Don't. You won't need to guess anymore about what people think of you because you will know that they see the qualities of your own design. Use the direction of the East to guide you in this practice. Writing exercise. So now it's time to get to work designing your matriarchal grandmother, the vehicle and container for the energetic body of who you are to new people. Sit down and list the attributes of your grandma that you love and all that she has given to you. Then write all that you truly hate, the parts of her that you cannot stand. If she made you eat green beans, write it down. If you did not know her, write it down along with all that you missed because she was not there. Then write out the parts of her that you want to design for yourself now. The most important thing is that you hold space for yourself inside of this relationship. In other words, she is a reflection of a guide into your life, not vice versa. She is the representation of who your highest self wants to create for new people that you want to see, feel, and know. Meditative practice. Once you have your list, spend time sitting with this, being and reflecting upon the portal, symbol, or totem for your new energetic body. Holding your hands to the east, breathing in the expanse of what you see in the dawning of the sun. Pull in the newness of who you are. Feel your perfect relational self to all that is new. Feel into your cells, your organs, your bones. Go deep into the feeling of your own body. Feel at home here. Call upon your connection to the matriarchal grandmother to give you permission to be a new reborn. 
made by perfect intention. You are molding a great sculpture of yourself in the East. Ask for the symbol and draw it on a piece of paper to signify your new self. If you do not know her name, you will need to find a name for her in a good way. You can do this by inviting her to come to you through meditation. So after you have drawn your symbol and created the energy of this new reflection of self, sit quietly in a safe place and ask her to show you her name. She may show herself to you in a vision with your eyes closed, or she might be the first thing you see when you open your eyes. Either way, you can attach the word grandma to this vision, and in doing so, you will have a name to speak in your introduction. Your maternal grandmother is the keeper of the East. She is waiting to share her divine medicine with you. I invite you to open the space to her and let her come through to share her wisdom. It is time to redesign in depth and clarity that which will assist you in your life path. Questions to meditate on. Take some time to meditate on these questions about your experiences with new relationships. Who am I to new people I meet? How can I show myself as transparent and real to those new in my path? Am I energetically available for new relationships? Can I see Creator God in new people on my path? Is the Creator showing me the beauty in new people? Am I curious about new people? The Father's Mother Container Your father's mother holds the sacred space for your family. She is the womb through which your father manifested, and she is the gatekeeper of the energies of the South the place in which your closest relations hold their medicine and wait for it to be realized in you. When you form the energetic manifestation of this part of yourself, you are defining the optimal self for you to be within your family. You are being your perfect self, full and complete, without insecurities and pain. You are free from those who have triggered you for years and their burdens. You are complete in the wholeness of who you are. Imagine the beauty of being your truest self to your family instead of being who they want or expect you to be. Before the creation of the world, it was foretold that you would be a part of a woven story of your family. It was your decision before your incarnation into this form to be a part of that woven blanket and to share in its tragedies, victories, joy, and pain. In the direction of the South, you become the daughter, son, niece, nephew, cousin, grandson, granddaughter. Your relationship to family is sculpted and guided by the hand of conscious intention and molded by the great source of divine love. You are asking the universe to fill your consciousness, mind, with the greatest love possible for your family, and cut the spiritual bindings that hold you stuck, such as neglect, trauma, and suffering. Now you are the victorious creation that you have always wanted to be for your family. Like a beacon of light, you stand in your fullness. As a whole human being, strengthened in your sovereignty, you are able to live in meaningful relationship to those closest to you. Many of us run from the medicine of the teachings of our family. We think, why would I be born to these people? Some even say that theirs is not their family at all. Our father's mother teaches us that we made their decision to manifest our family and that the pain and insecurities we've suffered are blessings to our lives. It can be a challenging perspective to take on, of course. When the abuse, hurt, trauma, and pain of life engulfs us, it was for me. By letting go of the perspective of my victimhood and by seeing the empowered view of my grandmother in the South, I have found a new and fresh understanding of who I am that softens the blows of the past. With the help of the father's mother of the South, I've learned why I choose the medicine of my family. I learned why I chose to live the life I lived why I chose to bear the burden 
of an abused child, why I was able to survive suicide, and why I was able to be bounced around as a child without a real home of my own. I learned why the burdens were my choice. This view of my sacred self through the eyes of my father's mother broke the chains of family shame and brought comfort to me once again. It is time for you too to let go of your traumas and embrace a new perspective. She is waiting in the South with so much medicine, but because you have not held space for her, she can only wait until you choose to do so. It is time to reconstruct her in a way that serves the greater process. Your father's mother will bring you the wisdom you seek about interacting with your family. She will bring you clarity about feeling compassion for people, even your sexual, physical, and mental abusers. With the help of her insight and perspective, you can let the gentle self unfold into a new relationship with your family and end the karmic curse that has plagued you. Create your symbol. On a blank piece of paper, draw a symbol to represent a portal through which the energy of who you are to your family will manifest. You will bring forth your father's mother through the design of this symbol. Let it be a portal for how you want her to be. This symbol will act as a window into the dimensional energies of your personal intention of who you are to your family and be a doorway into viewing yourself with the qualities and nature of what you have always wanted to be for your family. Before you know it, your mind will create that which you have honored. This is your process and your design. Use the direction of the South to guide you in this practice. Meditative practice. Holding your hands to the South and embracing the vast energies of the South. Begin breathing into the expanse of this place. Fill your cells, your organs, your bones. Go deep into your feeling, your own body. Feel at home here. Imagine yourself in perfect relationship with your family. Let go of all that does not serve you and breathe into all that does. Your father's mother is here in the South to hold space for you and to help you live in relational beauty with all that you are to your family. You are free now to imagine a better, more abundant life. Call upon your father's mother here in the South. She will guide you and help you in the process of finding your symbol. If you did not know the name of your father's mother, you will need to find a name for her in a good way. Do so by inviting her to come to you through the meditation. As before, sit quietly in a safe place with your symbol in front of you. Ask her to show you her name. She might show up She might show up. She might show you herself in a vision with your eyes closed, or you might see her when you open your eyes. However you receive it, attach the word grandma to the vision, and you are ready to use it in your introduction. Writing exercise. As you have done before, write down both the positive and negative attributes of your relationship with your father's mother. Write down what she means to you. You might also feel the pain of your abusive uncle, your hurtful father, the pain of your grandfather in her design. Let out what she didn't do and what she did do. Then, when you are done, draw your symbol for her. If you have never known her, Write out the parts of her that you can design for yourself now. The most important thing is that you hold space for yourself inside of this relationship. In other words, she is a reflection of a guide into your life, not vice versa. She is the representation of who your highest self wants to create for your family that you want to see, feel, and know. Meditative practice. Take some time to meditate on these questions about your relationship to your family and journal your thoughts, insights, and feelings. Who am I to my family? What can I share with my family 
that will draw us closer. How can I serve my family? How do they serve me? What medicine do I have to help my family live a good life? How can I love my family in a deeper way? Whew. Man, going through this. Robin, Andrew Ecker just passed you on to a pastor. His name is Greg Dumas. Following call religion spirit. All right, thank you. <laughs> she made you eat green beans, I know, right? Oh, uh, well, I'm getting a little tired. I have about 10 more pages to go. Let's see. Yeah, there's just about 10 more. Well, I'm on 133 and 149, so there's, I guess there's 16 more pages. But I think I need to take a break. It's really hot in this room. It's like scorching in here. Can't turn the fan on because the fan interrupts the recording. Anyway, love you guys. If you'd like to pre-order a copy of the audiobook, uh, just send me a direct message. We're doing them on a donation basis right now. Um, still be a little bit of time before we can uh, actually produce them, but almost done. It just takes some edits after that. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. You really encourage me. Bless you guys.